using Freud to examine Heart of Darkness. Let's look at three free books. Uh, the PDF of Civilization and Its Discontents by Freud, Dream Psychology, which you can download for free from by Sigmund Freud, and let's start with Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Let's read the first paragraph. The Nelly, a cruising yawl, swung to her anchor without a flutter of the sails and was at rest. There's the calmness there. The flood had made, the wind was nearly calm, and being bound down the river, the only thing for it was to come to and wait for the turn of the tide. The sea reach of the Thames stretched before us like the beginning of an interminable waterway. In the offing, the sea and the sky were welded together Without a joint and in the luminous space, the tan sails of the barges, drifting up with the tide, seemed to stand still in red clusters of canvas, sharply peaked with gleams of varnished spirits. A haze rested on the low shores that ran out to the sea in vanishing flatness. The air was dark above Gravesend, and farther back still seemed condensed into a mournful gloom brooding motionless over the biggest and the greatest town on earth. Notice the language here. Without a flutter of the sails and was at rest, nearly calm and wait. All of these send a kind of stasis or waiting kind of mood. Interminable waterway, sea and the sky welded together, Here's a word you'll see a lot, seemed. Um, it's like impressionism. It's almost like uh, he, he's uh, painting a canvas. Seemed to stand still. Haze rested on the low shores, vanishing flatness, dark above gravesand. Look at that word. And look at the sounds of the words, a mournful gloom brooding motionless. All of this sets a tone for the book. Let's see if we can use Sigmund Freud's text to shed some light on Heart of Darkness, which some people have said is like a dream. Freud writes that an interpretation of the dream has been wanting, and the conditions uh, of its origin and its relationship to the psychical life, its independence of disturbances and its peculiarities repugnant to our waking thought. All these need explanation, according to Freud. Note the assumptions here. Men are not gentle creatures who want to be loved. They are, on the contrary, creatures among whose instinctual endowment is to be reckoned a powerful share of aggressiveness. As a result, their neighbor is for them not only a potential helper or sexual object, but also someone who tempts them to satisfy their aggressiveness on him, to exploit his capacity for work without compensation, to use him sexually. He's a homo homini lupus, like a wolf. In consequence of this primary mutual hostility, of human beings, civilized society is perpetually threatened with disintegration. The interests of work in common would not hold it together. Instinctual passions are stronger than reasonable interests. Civilization has to use its utmost effort in order to set limits to man's aggressive instincts and hold them in check. Let's, dis let's discuss some of the assumptions behind Freud's uh, assertions here. What is he assuming about man's passion versus his logic? How does Freud start to shed light on Conrad's heart of darkness? Should we look at it as a dream and use his dream interpretation? Or should we look at the psyche and how uh, Freud seems to understand human nature. 